Hey YouTube, Ed here with Jack of All Trades and welcome to another video. So what have I got here today? I got the Smith & Wesson FPC and I got the kel Sub 2000, both in 9mm. We're going to go over these two guns, we're going to compare them and I'm going to let you know which one I like better. So stay tuned, let's talk about these two guns. And welcome back. So yes, we've got the uh, Smith & Wesson FPC 9mm and we've got the kel Sub 2000. Let's talk about these two guns and the differences today. And before I do that, please go down and hit that like and subscribe button. Make sure you ring that notification bell so you get notified of upcoming videos. Hit me with those comments and uh, help me to support this channel. It's the only way I'll ever ask you to support this channel. I do not have a Patreon account and I do not ask you for money. All right, uh, first off, neither company, kel or Smith & Wesson, sent me these things. I bought my kel -Tec. The Smith & Wesson belongs to a friend of mine. Thank you, Derek, for letting me borrow the gun to do this review today. So let's talk about the differences. Uh, I'm not going to do a review of the Smith & Wesson. There are plenty of reviews out there, and I'm not going to recreate that horse. But let's, let's just talk about some of the differences. Uh, first off, big major difference to kel -Tec, you can get this gun to accept a whole bunch of different magazine configurations. You can get it for various types of Glocks and even the M&P mags, the Smith & Wesson M&P mags if you want. Whereas the Smith & Wesson, you have to use M&P mags. Not that that's really a problem because when you buy the Smith & Wesson, you get three mags with it. Whereas if you buy the kel -Tec, you get one mag with it. But a lot of people own Glocks and if you do, you can buy the kel to accept those Glock magazines. And so that is a, that is a one-up advantage that kel actually has on the Smith & Wesson. But Smith & Wesson does send you three mags with their gun. Uh, let's talk about folding. So this gun is obviously in the, uh, in, the, in the deployed position. It is an empty chamber. We are dealing with a safe firearm. To fold this gun up, you basically push the trigger guard forward and the gun folds up very simply. To D or to unfold the gun or to deploy it, you have to pull this slide lever back here and then you can deploy it. The Smith & Wesson, uh, we are also dealing with an empty and safe firearm. To fold the gun up, you have to push this lever here and it folds sideways, kind of like a door which does widen it out is in comparison to the kel -Tec. The kel -Tec is only as wide as the gun is in the deployed situation. With the Smith, it's twice as wide in the folded configuration. But at any rate, I digress. Still has a, a button that you have to push to fold it, which is to be expected, but to unfold the firearm, all you have to do is pull it apart. There's no buttons to push, nothing like that. They just unfold, lock it into place, you're ready to go. So the deployment of this rifle is much, much, much faster, much faster. Uh, it uses the charging handle as the uh, locking mechanism to kind of hold it shut. And it's locking is a relative term. It really doesn't lock it. It just kind of holds it in place, but it does hold it with enough friction where it does stay shut. So it is a good system. How, how long is it gonna last? I, I don't know. I've got maybe 25, 30 rounds through this rifle. I haven't opened and closed it a whole bunch of times, but uh, it seems like it's holding up fine. Couldn't tell you how long it's going to last. Uh, other differences with the kel and the Smith & Wesson. The kel does not have last round bolt hold open, whereas the Smith & Wesson does. You basically have an M&P pistol lower here operating a pistol, cal uh, pistol caliber carbine. So basically your lower on this gun is just like any other M&P pistol and it operates very similarly as any other M&P pistol. It's got the uh, the mag releases are in the same place, the, uh, the bolt releases are relatively in the same place, the safety's in a different spot uh, obviously because it's for a rifle but there are some differences but for the most part you have an M&P lower on this firearm. 
So it does have last round hold open, very much an advantage over the Keltec. Speaking of last round hold open, bolt releases. This bolt release on this, on this rifle sucks. I hate it. There's nothing about it I like. I'm sorry to be so blunt about it, but it is super stiff. It is very, very hard to operate. And the one that they have here for the ambidextrous folks is on the magazine or the uh, ejection port. That thing's a finger biter. Ask me how I know because I've gotten my finger in there and it stings, it hurts right now. And it is just super, super stiff. It's really, you really gotta, and I'm not even being dramatic, you have to pull quite hard there to make those bolt releases release. So I generally find that it is just much easier to charge the weapon using the charging handle rather than to use the slide releases or the bolt releases, whatever you wanna call them because they are very, very stiff. This one on the, uh, on the uh, passenger side of the gun is right in the injection port and I just don't like having my fingers that close to the bolt. That is one thing I really don't like about the gun. Another thing I, I really like about the M&P is this buttstock they've got here. It feels really nice on my face. It, it really does feel good on my face. You'll remember when I did my kel review, my complaint was is that it didn't feel real good on the buffer tube to be putting your face on there it was kind of uncomfortable that is not the case with the m p very comfortable to put the m p up against your face Along those same lines, if you are using the iron sights on this rifle, uh, that was another complaint I had about the kel was it was really hard to get down on those iron sights to see to shoot. It, it was just very, very difficult to do. Whereas with the m and I don't have to get down as far on it. So it, it, it's much more user friendly with the iron sights as opposed to the kel -Tec. The other nice thing about the M&P is that the way that they, the way they fold this gun, it lends itself really good to putting red dot optics on here. Uh, with the with the Keltec folding over the top like this, you obviously can see the Picatinny rail would get in the way of any optics. Now they do have mounts to work with this gun, but they're goofy, and you got to turn them and twist them. They actually use a piece of string to hold the bolt open. Just all kinds of business like that, which I'm just not really impressed with, which is why I decided to keep my kel iron sight. But the M&P, with the way it folds, lends itself really well to putting optics on here. So when you consider the width of the gun in the folded configuration, it really is kind of offset by the uh, versatility of being able to put an optic on here. It just isn't going to fit as well in a backpack as the kel would. The M&P, they also give you two spare magazines and they actually have onboard magazine storage on here, which is really kind of nice. I just don't like the storage or the retention system they put on here. Uh, to get this mag out, you have to push the button on this side to get it out. And it's kind of a bit of a digitary gymnastics to get them out of there that's just not really super intuitive. It's nice that it's got onboard storage but it does not lend itself well to fast magazine releases. I would imagine you would take some pretty fair bit of practice to figure out how to put those mags in, but it, it would just take some time and some practice to get it figured out. Really wish the retention system was more of a friction fit rather than some crazy little buttons. It would be much better if I could drop the mag, just come up here, pull the mag out, slap it in, 
charge the rifle and it would be a much faster reload if it was a friction fit retention system. Uh, triggers, the Smith & Wesson's got a little bit cleaner trigger than the kel -Tec. The kel trigger is, it's a hair on the mushy side, but it, it's not horrible. It is a little soft and squishy, whereas the kel trigger, or the, excuse me, the Smith & Wesson trigger, the Smith & Wesson trigger is just a little bit nicer, but not that much. And it certainly isn't enough to say that the Smith & Wesson's got a better, enough, a, a better trigger to the point where it would make me alter my buying decision because it really doesn't. It's really not that much better. I know the kel often had times have a lot of plastic parts in them. Smith & Wesson doesn't do that. They put more metal parts in there, especially in the portent areas. But I've got 500 rounds through my kel and I really don't have any problems or concerns with it. Uh, the safety on the M&P, much more intuitive, uh, the safety position on this gun. It's right here, index finger, red is dead. When you push on it, you see red here, red is dead. Much more intuitive. That was another complaint I had about the kel -Tec. The safety is way back here on the back side. Not real intuitive to... To making it to, to making a fast safety removal, it, it takes some practice. You have to learn where it is, you have to determine where it is. And it, it just doesn't, I, don't know, I just don't like where the safety is on the Caltech. So I really like the safety system on the MP much, much better. Uh, the other noticeable difference between the kel and the Smith & Wesson is the kel charging handle location is kind of in an awkward spot. It's underneath underneath the, uh, the butt portion of the rifle and it's really in an awkward spot. However, the, uh, the slap loading of it is an, a benefit. I like that part of it. You don't have that with the Smith & Wesson. What you do have with the Smith & Wesson is this is your charging handle. Acts a lot like an AR charging handle. Really do like that portion of it. You cannot pull on just one side. You have to pull both to make it operate correctly. Uh, if you pull on one side, it binds and it sticks and it's not going to work. So at the end of the day, which gun do I like better? Uh, that's tough because they both have their... They both have their ups and they both have their downs. I like the kel simply because in the folded configuration, it's much, much thinner. I can get it into a backpack and it's much easier to carry and stow. However, it doesn't lend itself well to optics. But then again, I'm not a big fan of putting your life in the hands of batteries. Uh, that being said, the m and the way I have this red dot set up, it's on a quick removal system. So if I did have dead batteries, I could just very quickly remove the the red dot sight and it would it would come right off and I would have iron sights to deploy and back up on. The M&P seems like it's a little smoother in its action and it seems like it shoots a little more comfortably than the M&P does. Uh, the other thing about the M&P versus the kel is the M&P is considerably more expensive by about $150 or $200. You can get these kel on sale for under $400, bucks, $399.99 I've seen them for. Uh, the M&P is still relatively new, it's just a few months old. And they're still, I think MSRP is like six fifty, and they're still selling for just about six. I think my friend bought this one for five fifty, so they're still considerably more expensive than the Keltex. 
Uh, reliability, I've got 500 rounds through my kel -Tec. I do not have a problem with it. It has fired everything I've shot through it, and I don't have any issues with it whatsoever. I can't speak to the durability and reliability. The M&P, I've only got 50 rounds through it, but as it stands right now, the M&P is shooting just fine. It's, it hasn't had any hiccups or failures. I put a couple of drops of oil on it just to make sure everything ran smooth. But so far, it seems to be working just fine. So which one do I like better? I, actually, I kind of like them both, but I've, as of right now, I'm kind of leaning a little towards the kel just because the compactness of it. Now, the one nice thing M&P does give you because of the way it folds is they do give you this carry case on it, on it for it, which is actually really nice. And unless you knew what you were doing or you've seen it before, you'd never know somebody is carrying a firearm in there. And I guess you, you could feasibly throw it over your shoulder and carry it around like a, like a bag or a purse. It's a little big, it's not horribly concealable. I certainly wouldn't want to put this thing in a backpack because you are definitely going to feel it. There's going to be a bulge there and it's going to, it's going to feel bad. Uh, I, guess, I guess it really de kind of depends on, on what you want the gun for, but as it stands right now, I really like my kel -Tec. I really have no complaints about it and I really like the way it operates and its versatility and functionality. I like the fact that it uses the mags from my Glocks, which I have already, and it's, I don't know, I just, I really kind of like the kel -Tec for that respect and that respect alone. Although the M&P is a fine firearm, don't get me wrong, uh, Smith & Wesson has got a great reputation for making good, reliable firearms, and this one doesn't seem to be any different, it's just a different concept on how to stow and deploy the firearm. Now there are some haters out there that are going to say the kel junk. It's plastic, it's not built very well, it's, it's this, that, and the other thing. All things which are true statements, to be honest with you, but you got to understand the kel is about $150 to $200 cheaper firearm than the Smith & Wesson. And if you're working on a bit of a budget, there's nothing wrong with the kel -Tec. Like I said, I've got 500 rounds through mine, I haven't had a lick of problems with it. You should expect a certain level of quality and durability out of the Smith & Wesson for what they charge you for it. They are not giving those things away and they're very expensive. And a carrying case with two extra magazines is not worth $200. It's just not. So where do they put the differences? It's in the inner workings of the firearm and, and things of that effect. So there are very, diff very distinct differences. I like shooting the Smith & Wesson more more comfortable to shoot. I like the way the charging handle operates. I la like the last round holdover. I like everything about the shootability of the Smith & Wesson. If I was going to own this gun, I'd probably never fold it up. It would probably just stay a pistol length carbine and the only time I would fold it up is if I'm packing it up to go on a trip. If you really want to get down with a backpack gun or something that's really not going to take up a lot of room and weight and space, because you just you're going camping and you want some bear deterrent or something like that. I would probably go with the Keltec just because of the way it stows. It's very thin, very light, very easy to pack up. So there it is, Smith and Wesson FPC Keltec Sub 2000. Those are the differences I see. A little better firearm in the Smith and Wesson. I will admit it is a little nicer to shoot. It seems like it's a little more substantial. It is a hair heavier. But the kel for what you're paying for is not a bad option either. Uh, I'm not going to go hating on the kel just because Smith & Wesson came out with an FPC because uh, the kel does have some very distinct advantages that the Smith & Wesson does not have. So that all being said, let's go ahead and wrap this video up. Now, if you're liking what you see here on the Jack of All Trades channel and you're liking what I'm doing out here, please go down and hit that like and subscribe button. Make sure you ring that notification bell and hit me with those comments. I really do like interacting with my subscribers, and the comments are a fun way to do it. With that, this is Ed from Jack of All Trades. As always, thank you for stopping by. Thank you to my log type subscribers, and we will see you on the next video.